ladies and gentlemen, what's one of the big reasons we care about heart disease? Why is, why is having heart disease bad? There's, it's bad for many reasons, but yes, or one. I mean, uh, heart disease is the image, like an image on your body. Like if you don't have that, you kind of live without it. I don't know. Any damage to it will affect every single part of your body. Okay, so it has pervasive effects on the body. It, it definitely has big limitations. But another reason is because it what people? It, it kills, kills people. Okay. Do we have death in this model? Mm -hmm. And heart disease is a, it's very dangerous. Your heart is, I mean, I don't have to overemphasize this, right? I mean, like, your heart is critical to your body's operation, you know? Uh, and and so it, it's, a, it's profoundly dangerous if someone develops heart disease and we don't have any impact represented on, on death and mortality. So can we represent that? Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to add in a representation. This is what's called a closed population right now. It's one set of people followed throughout the model. It's the entire duration of the model, it's just one set of people. It's what we might be called a cohort commonly. Um, we just follow them. And it's the same people, they, they don't change at all. We're going to have people now be at risk of death from heart disease, okay? So we're going to, how could we capture the fact that people with heart disease have a lot higher chance to die from, from that than people without heart disease? Uh, uh, so Matthias? So we can use like two different grades. Yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, exactly. You you got it. So we'll have a final state here, which will be represented as death. Okay. Oh. Okay. Did I stop? Was it being shared earlier? Yes. Okay. Okay. So yes, absolutely. Um, great. And uh, okay. Um. Did I stop stop sharing my screen instead of stop sharing recording? Maybe, maybe that's no, what happened. It's something recording. And then you okay. Start. Okay. Okay. Um, so we could have two transitions here, right? Um, from heart disease. Oh, does anyone want me to post this model? Would that be helpful? Yeah. Okay. So so before I modify it, um, let me go, let me go, let me go post it. And then I'll save it as version three and we'll we'll get going. Here we go. Okay, so it's T minus 15 seconds and counting here um, for models built in class. So I'm going to just, okay, that might be optimistic. Uh, where are my, oh, come on. Um, I, I know, there it is. There it is. I should move it up to the top. There we go. Boom, boom, and okay, okay, 30 seconds. Um, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, version two is there. You can go and find it. And now we're gonna save it as version three, okay? Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a point of advice. Take it from an old man. When you're building up a model, try to keep it within about 30 minutes of being able to run at any time. Build it up incrementally and keep it runnable so you can learn from it frequently. And so if someone wants to see it, a dialogue about it, you can you can do that. Okay. Um, so try to create successive versions, which are saved away. So even if you're in the middle of a big change, you can go back to the last version and, and run to that really easily. And you can compare what you see from this version with what you saw from that one to figure out why you're seeing such weird dynamics. Is it a bug? Is it new emergent properties? Okay, so per Matthias's suggestion, I'm gonna add in a final state. The state is gonna be called death. Um, and we're going to um we're going to have transitions here from heart disease and from healthy heart. There we go. Um and uh, this one is going to be called, um, uh, so uh, death from natural 
causes, we'll call it. Um, it's going to be a rate transition. And we will make it a rate of 0 0.01 two five so about 80 years yeah um and uh so that's 0 0.0125 it's just above one percent if it were one percent they'd live on average how long 100 years one over 0.01 yeah and so here and with heart disease we'll have it 0, 0.0 uh yes or 0 0.05 how long does that mean that they would live on average, once they have heart disease, 20 years, yeah, one over 0.05. I'm hammering this home and hope you'll remember it. All right. Okay. Oh, so don't be a rate. It's a rate. It should be. Oh my gosh, it's a timeout. Out of black spot. Uh, okay, timeout. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh, Tony saved me. Okay, that's great. Uh, per year rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this should be called. Um, Name your transitions and show the names. Um, give them names worthy of them. Um, okay, so this would be called death from heart disease. Uh, oops, heart disease. And um, and I'm being a bit glib here because technically uh, it's, it's more like death with heart disease. Uh, and I'm going to show both these names. Um, uh, probably I should say with, because um, uh, the issue of a full attribution to it is, okay. So now we have um, death occurring more frequently, uh, more with much higher risk from this state compared to this state. Mm -hmm. um, and these two are, by the way, competing risks. Did someone develop heart disease first or die first from other causes? Ladies and gentlemen, um, if I run the model, is the population going to be dying? Yeah. Okay, it turns out the final state doesn't automatically delete someone. You may be wondering, does this automatically delete them? The answer is no. Let me show you how to delete them. Oh my gosh. Um, so uh, my, my computer needs power. And so I'm gonna... Plug it in so we're not rudely interrupted. Um, okay, so um, it turns out we have to delete them. So here we go to the final state, and we're going to say, and again, this is a bit of any logic administrivia, our implementation detail. I'm going to say main dot remove under bar population. Um, and who's it going to remove? This person, the, this. What is this, ladies and gentlemen? Some people here should remember. Hopefully, most people who took 270 should remember. Yeah, it's referring to the current agent. To burn. It basically saying, hey, Maine, remove me from the population. By the way, if your population in Maine was called pop, this would be remove under bar pop. If it was called people, it would be remove under bar people. You get that? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's run this. And I think what we will see is something of a most grim character, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to be running it. And I see something unfortunate happening. What do we see? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Oh no, this one became a smoker. <laughs> Hold on there. Hold on there, buddy. Um okay. How many people are left in the population? Thirty. Okay, Danica's the question. Yes. The death was the code for death is gonna be pasted in the in the chat. That sounds ominous. <laughs> um it it's it's technically true. Um, okay, uh, so I'll put it in the chat window. Here's the code for death. Okay, I'm not conveying a grand secret of life, but um, you know this this is the this is the code to remove this person from the population. Why Maine here? 
Because Maine has what in it? Population. Yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just added that in. Good. Good. Um. Uh, so, how did this change the number of people with heart disease? Can anyone say? The number of people with heart disease. Uh, uh, what if if I were to look at the number of people with heart disease now at the final part of the simulation, would it be lower or higher than before? Lower. And wh why is it lower? Because yeah, because people have died and disproportionately people with heart disease died, right? Yeah. Is the fraction of people with heart disease lower or higher? Well, okay, but it is lower, 0.8 here, right? Um, it is 0.8 rather than 0.998 or something like that. Yeah, 984, yeah, um, exactly. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we, we've added demographics here. Now, um, sorry, we've added, you know, uh, Vital processes, people, people dying. Now, um, I want to capture a couple more features of the situation with you. Um, first of all, let's, you know, looking at this statistic on the population, it's kind of for the birds. Let's, again, it's nothing deep, but let's go have a plot of these epiphenomenal outcomes. It will only take a minute or two to add. And we'll we'll have a nicer way to display it. So let's go to Maine. Go 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 down Maine. Okay. Um, and I'll I'll post this in a moment. Go down Maine and we'll actually go go up above here, and we will add in a from this analysis plot. We're going to add in a time plot. Okay. Um, here we go. A time plot. And this time plot will be um, a heart disease time plot. Okay, there we go. And it's going to plot out a um, fraction of population with heart disease. Okay. Okay, great. And what value would I plot out? For the fraction of the population with heart disease, anyone? Did, did, did I have something which already computed this? Yeah, the statistics. So we can actually call the statistic. We can say population, hey, give me um, heart disease, and I'm going to, there we go. Give me the fractional prevalence of heart disease in the population. Hmm? There it is. Right there. Okay. Um, and then there's a bit of putzing we want to do. Look, we want to make sure, yeah, it's updated every year. Sure, we'll update it yearly. A time unit, a time window of 100 years. That's 100 model time units. Sure, that will be fine. Oop. And, and we'll plot up to 100 latest samples. Okay, so we're plotting this value. So let's go watch this. It, I set it to gold, but you know, I, I find kind of gold a, a little bit hard in my old eyes. Um, uh, okay, so I'll make it I'll make it black. There we go. Okay, um, and now we will go run the model, and we should be able to see these this outcome shown up there at the top of the the simulation. So there we go. And here's the fraction of people with heart disease. Why is it going up so much initially? Can anyone say? Oh, everyone starts without heart disease. They all start healthy, right? Um, and it's rising and rising. And, and there it goes up to about, about 0.8. Okay. Um, Oh, uh, they are dying on mice here. 
they're 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 dying here, right? So this is the fraction of the current population that have heart disease. People who die will not be included in either the numerator or denominator. It's the fraction of the people right now in the model, which excludes those who have died with heart disease, right? Okay. This is the fraction of people with heart disease. Notice I did the fraction. What did I do the fraction? Anyone? Why did I do the count? What did I tell you about fractions earlier? I, yes, yeah, the fraction is really interesting because it's it, the count of you a million people or a thousand people isn't very much, doesn't matter. But if you have like 10,000, you have 7,000, that's quite a few. That's right. The fraction captures that. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, these dimensionless quantities, things like fractions, they actually carry extra insight, significance, generality for them. Just like Ben said there. Um, look, if I ran the model with the population of of a thousand versus with a population of a hundred, you know, the count's going to be different. And I have to think, is this a lot or little fractions? If, if I ran it with 10,000 people or ran it with 100,000 people or 1,000 people, what I would hope for comparability is that to use a measure that translates to each of those contexts in a straightforward way. A fraction does, right? I could look at it for 100,000 people. I could look at it for 10,000. I could look at it for 1,000. And it allows apples to apples comparison. If I, if I were dealing with counts of people with heart disease, you know, that isn't going to translate nicely between those. Quantities that are dimensionless translate more readily. Hmm? They, they, they have more generality to them. They often will transport from one context to another, despite you having changed a bunch of different things, despite you having changed the time scale in which you're measuring things, or changed the number of people in the population, or the length of time you're running it, or what have you. They translate. We'll come back to this point. Okay. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we have we have a, a fraction, and and uh, we have this fraction of the population that that have heart disease at any one time. Okay. Um. Oh, they weren't dying. Yeah, that's true. Um, although the fraction was going up early on, that is true. There's a lot of people who developed heart disease who hadn't yet died. And so you had a lot of people around with heart disease, especially many. Later, disproportionately, those folks with heart disease will be dying out, which will tend to lower that fraction. That's right. That That is true. That is absolutely the case. Danica is bang on with that. It's a subtle point, but it's it's true. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we've captured some basic features of it, but I want to I want to build up something more here. Um, first of all, I want to ask you um, if so. Right now, if we consider former smokers, what's their chance per year of falling back into into smoking? Where would I find that here? But if I were thinking about current sm former smokers, yeah, and 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 relapse. That's right. Oh, by the way, I promised I'd go post this, so I'm going to I'm going to post this even as we speak. Okay. Um. Here we go. Oh, for some reason that's not shown. Not sure. Um. Okay. Models built in class. Uh, mumble, mumble. Here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, okay, and we want version three. Okay, great, post it. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
Well, I'm 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 actually before I before I deal with that, I want to give you a little challenge. So we said, and it's in fact on this thing um, that we're interested in understanding the impacts on heart disease of smoking cessation and smoking prevention programs. How would we? Oh, oh, where's 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 my any logic? There it is. Okay. Um, well, gosh, everything is wayward today. Um, here it is. Okay. Um, okay. So suppose we wanted to suppose this was a starting model now, and we want to say, okay, how would having people cease smoking help? Any anyone? How can we represent an effort that would get people to cease smoking? Yeah, uh, that will adjust. Make a parameter that controls the flow from the smoking state to the uh, smoker. Good. Somehow, we're actually uh, adjust that parameter. Good. So, if you had an effort that, for example, on packs of cigarettes showed scary images of someone's lungs after smoking, or if you tried to get yeah, doctors to speak to their patients more about the importance of quitting smoking or the dangers to the grandkids if they continue smoking. What it could affect is quitting, right? Is quit. So let's go and check out an intervention as represented in a very stylized way, a very rough way, which might capture that. Right now, this rate of quitting is just hard-coded. It's the rate is four per year. What does that mean? How often, on average, between times should they attempt to quit? They attempt to quit four times, four times per year, which is every yeah, every every uh, three months. months. Uh, yeah, uh, three months, right? Um, so so yeah, four times a year, twelve months a year. So so here. Right now it's hard coded. We'd like to try to represent something which would change this, right? Now in a fancier model, we might say, well, you know, you've seen that the doctors and how frequently people go to the doctor's office or or how often they, they encounter those packages and how big an impact. But for now, we're gonna do something very common, which is we're just going to change this and, and up it. So the way to do this is to capture it in a way that is easily adjusted by a scenario. How can we do that? Uh, using, uh, use, uh, it wouldn't be a variable. It would be a parameter because it's a parameter that encodes an assumption, which could be altered on a per scenario basis. Where would that parameter live here? N begins with M. Ends with N. Maine, Maine, ladies and gentlemen. Not not the state, but the but the uh, class. Okay, so we'll go to palette, and we're going to drag in a parameter, ladies and gentlemen. And by by convention, oh no, I dragged in an event. I don't want that. That's that's not yet. That's for later. Um, okay, so we're going to have this be called cessation rate. It's going to be a rate. What sort of what sort of type will it be? Is it going to be a color? Is it going to be an int? Is it going to be a a, a length? It's going to be a double. We'll make it a double, okay? And by default, it's going to be four, four point zero. It's in Maine, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in Maine. Okay, there we go. And now, does this thing refer to that parameter? Not right now, but it will. We put main dot cessation rate. What did I do, ladies and gentlemen? What did I do? I took a parameter, I put it into main. Why? Because it's a, it's a parameter that holds for all agents, ladies and gentlemen. All agents are subjected to this parameter. If I put in person, it would imply that each person might have a different cessation rate. For now, we're going to keep the model simple and use the same cessation rate across different people. So we put it in main. And 
Now, each person is going to refer to that cessation rate in Maine. In case you didn't catch it, the cessation rate in Maine is going to have a default value. If we don't have, in this case, a, uh, a scenario that changes, it'll be four. And each parameter, each person is going to use whatever that cessation rate. But now, because it's a parameter, what can we do across different scenarios? If you start different experiments, what can we do? We can change it. We can have it. To be more precise about it, it's not that we're changing it over time for different scenarios, different experiments. They can make different assumptions about it, right? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, does anyone have a question about what I just did? Anyone want me to show something? Um, yes, Tony. Can, what's the difference between parameter and variable? Then? A variable's job in life is to change over time. Oh, I see. This thing changes over time, doesn't it? Where does it change? Where does the value of this change? Across different smoking states, right? We're assigning to it. This variable's job is to change over time. Where does this change? Across different smoking states uh, as well, right? Their job in life is to change over time. Does this parameter in main, this cessation rate, does that change over time? No. It encodes an assumption that is going to be imposed by the thing that creates main, which is the scenario, the experiment. If, if you have a parameter within a person, the assumptions are set by the thing that creates the person, which is the population. If you have a parameter main, the parameters assumptions are going to be imposed by the thing that creates main, which is the, the, the scenario. Right, is that clear? Okay. Parameters encode and communicate assumptions from the point where the thing is created to the thing being created. Okay. Cessation rate. Okay, so having done that, we're going to vary this param this parameter, the cessation rate, not over time, but over different scenarios. So I'm going to say new. Well, here, let's copy this one. We have a population of 1,000. We're going to copy, and we're going to say paste. Boom. And this will say population 1,000 smoking cessation intervention there we go what did i do i copied this i right clicked here i did copy i pasted up here i said paste in the whole model and i named it population a thousand smoking cessation intervention but what do i have to do to make this a smoking cessation intervention yeah choose the value and it should be higher or lower if it's if we're getting people to quit should this be higher or lower Higher. Higher, right? Um, higher. I always appreciate people speaking out, though, but it's we're setting the rate at which this is going, right? If we want people to quit, it should be higher, right? They should have more chance per unit time of, of quitting. Does that make sense? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to raise it to six. By the way, there's slicker ways yet I could do this, but but let's let's keep this simple. Let's let, we're gonna raise it to six. Let's go run the model. May we? Okay, okay, we're gonna run it. Hearing no objections. Here it is. It's running and boom. Oh my goodness. We still have a few few people left. And the fraction of them with heart disease, well, it's not that much lowered right now. Uh, a lot of people, um, but they do seem to be more former smokers now. I think I'm going to ask you to put a thing in, ask about the fraction of former smokers. Okay. Um, and I suspect uh, we will, in fact, see a, a lowering of the number of the fraction of current smokers in the population. Okay. Um, now, but now I want to do something else. I want to have 
an intervention which prevents people from relapsing. Think about a nicotine patch or something that will help people de overcome the cravings that come to fall back into smoking. How can we, how do we capture that? If we wanted to have them have be less likely to relapse, what can we do? We could define a parameter which would express their probability of relapsing. And if we want to help them lower their chance of relapsing, would this parameter be higher or lower? Lower, because we want to lower their chance of falling back. Are you, you ready to try this? Wait a minute, what? What does it say? 26 per year, what? Huh? It should have been six. Does it say 26 on your side? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's, it, 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 I, I thought I had said six last time, so I don't know where the 20 came, 26. Because uh, when I put it, I was quite certain I had said six. Um, okay. Um, six per year. Okay. Um, okay. We, we have to be careful, but um, yeah. So, okay. We, we only have about a minute left. Um, I think I can ask you to finish this for your assignment, right? For a take home exercise. And I'm not going to ask you to lower initiation too. Right. If, if we want to have people prevention of smoking, we can lower the rate at which people initiate, right? But I'm going to ask you one question I want you to think about. And I'm not asking, I'm not going to ask you to, to do it. But I'm going to ask you to think about it. The question is right now, when people are dead, they have that same chance. So when they're former smokers, they have that same chance per month of falling back into smoking, no matter how long they've been there. Right? This chance of six times per year on average. So on average, they'll fall back into smoking once every how often? On average, they'll last how long before falling back? Two months. Two months, right? One sixth of the year. One sixth of 12 months, right? Two months. Is that true in general that someone, if someone's been quit for one month, what do you think the chance is per month they'll fall back? High or low? Quite high. If they've been quit for one day, do you think it's high or low that they'll fall back? High in the next month, yeah. If they've been quit for 30 years, do you think it would be very low? Be very low because amongst other things, they're past the huge craving that comes with nicotine, et cetera. So we're going to want a way of, of setting this depending on how long they've been in their state, okay? Um, if they've been here longer, the chance will be the chance will be lower. lower. The longer they stay a former smoker, the lower the chance of leaving from up. Is that what this is capturing now? Yeah. No, it's the same chance for you next time, right? Okay. Um, so I want you to think about that puzzle, but I'm going to ask you to put in a little a, a parameter um, for relapse and have a, a smoking relapse prevention intervention, and then another one for initiation that will lower the chance of people starting to smoke, and you can look at outcomes. I'm going to have you add a graph which shows the prevalence of smoking, okay? And I'm going to take a quick quick peek because we changed it from 26 times they relapsed per year. Oh my gosh, you know, that that's like that's like once every two weeks or something. Uh, and uh, now we we do see a lot more former smokers now, not surprisingly, and a lower fraction of the population with heart disease. Interesting. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Desai. We submit this as the, uh, yeah, yeah. So if, if you could check this in here and submit it, uh, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, so 
if you could submit that for the in-class exercise kit, uh, that would be great. And if you're working with someone, then uh, be sure to note that in the comment field. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Um, uh, we, have a, we have a lot what we're going to be building on for this uh, this example on concepts. Thank you. Take care there.